Dear friends, dear colleagues, I'm very happy to introduce you our new project that is called Dental Tips. And this project is dedicated to different interesting things in dentistry, like case discussions, case reports, step-by-step -step protocols, and definitely tips and tricks for daily practice to become, to make you actually, to make your life better, to make your life easier, professional life, definitely. So let's go. Our first episode will be dedicated to uh, the problem with a tight interproximal contact point. What we are going to discuss? We're going to discuss the sequence of bonding of posterior restorations, how rapid arm isolation influences the proximal contact points, what kind of tips and tricks to use if you have tight interproximal contact and how to avoid it as well. Let's go. So uh, here is the clinical case that I would like to introduce you. And before I will uh, play the video, I would like to mention a few tips that will be useful. So tip number one is dedicated to the sequence of the cementation process. When we deal with the posterior teeth and we need to bond overlays or crowns, uh, there are two sequences that we usually use in uh, our, uh, in, in our uh, protocols. So the sequence number one that is easier for interproximal contact uh, fights, let's say, when you start with the mesial side and you go progressively to the distal side. For example, you start with the first premolar, then you do second premolar, then you do first molar, and then you finish with the second molar. In this case, if you have any problems with interproximal contact, you will need to fight with only one distal interproximal contact, and that's easier. The sequence number two is when you start with a distal tooth, with a second molar, for example, and then you go first molar, second premolar, and the first premolar. This sequence will be used when you have patient with a so-called mouth opening limitations and uh, when you need to start with a distal tooth because may, your patient may get some uh, muscle fatigue or uh, some problems with the mouth opening, okay? So in this case, you will do molar tooth, the last one, and then you progressively go to the mesial. And when you will do your uh, first premolar, then you will have to fight with the two interproximal contacts, mesial versus canine and the distal versus second premolar. Okay, in this video, you are uh, able to see the second option when we start to bond the, uh, the second uh, molar force and actually it is already bonded. You can see the metal matrix band that I use to protect second uh, molar that is already bonded because I'm going to do my uh, sandblasting. I would like to show you uh, the process of the sandblasting. This is actually our protocol when we start cementation, we use sandblaster. Uh, aluminum oxide 27 microns to clean up everything and to increase some bonding strength to enamel. Okay, so after that process, we do very important step. Dry fit, try in. Dry fit control with the Rabidam. Because when you place Rabidam, you will always have some problems with interproximal contact because the Rabidam itself is pretty tight and you have some pressure from the clamp, pressure from the Rabidam membrane, and definitely you may get some micro movements of the patient's teeth. And as a result, you may get some problems with the contact points. So what do you have to do? You have to be sure that everything is fine. So you do your dry fit control. If you see that the contact is very tight and the restoration is not fitting properly, like in the, in the video that you will see a little bit later on. By the way, this is another trick that I would like to highlight. When we uh, make the rabidam isolation and, and cement patients uh, and cement restorations of the patient's teeth, we perforate rabidam for all teeth that will have to be bonded, like second molar, first molar, second premolar, first premolar, K9, maybe some, some incisors and so on and so on, okay? But I do not expose all the teeth. I expose only teeth that, I, that I'm bonding right now and the two that is, that is already bonded before that, okay? What, why I do that? Because uh, I, didn't, I don't need to protect adjacent teeth that are not uh, getting their restorations uh, before uh, against the sandblasting, against cementation, against bonding and so on and so on. So I get much more clean uh, procedure and uh, no problems with the adjacent teeth actually. And, 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 and these perforations that are ready for uh, their teeth, uh, we can seal with a liquid dump, for example, with any kind of cheap uh, flowable uh, composite. Okay, so this is one of the tips that I'm sharing with you during this um, discussion. Okay, so here we have a clean surface of the uh, tooth that we are going to bond our restoration. This is the dry fit control, as I mentioned before. I place the restoration, I check it with a direct vision, I check it also with the 
a mirror and I found that there was some small gap between restoration and the tooth in the marginal area, which means I have traumas with that contact point. So I will use articulating paper to check it. But as compensation for the rubber dam pressure, you have to use wedge. That's another trick, another tip that you have to uh, remember and uh, actually use in your practice when you do your um, uh, cementation using rubber dam. Because if you will not place the wedge, for example, or any other thing to create some space, uh, effect spacing, effect, you may get problems with a tight contact, then you will use your articulating paper, you will find out the super contact, you will equilibrate the super contact, and after you will remove rubber dam, probably you may find out that there is no contact anymore and you get problems with the patient with a food impaction and so on and so on so this is what you have to not to forget actually yeah so here we place the articulating paper we press on the restoration we move the articulating paper out and uh, you will see the super contact as i mentioned to equilibrate the super contact you can use different instruments uh, i use rubbers for uh, ceramic finishing and polishing. So uh, after that, I will recheck contact point again. I will place restoration back. I have to be 300% sure that everything goes very well. Everything seats properly. And then I will start doing my adhesive cementation. This is exactly what I use to check interproximal contact points. It's, this is eight micron articulating paper, this red color. I don't know why, but it actually works better on ceramic than the blue or green. And uh, actually, it will help me to, to identify the super contacts and uh, have no promise later on. So here is the, um, the case from another view. Actually, this is the case after orthodontic treatment. And as a result, we had to go for the restorative part to compensate some occlusal problems. And we used ceramic overlays and ceramic crown lays, crown lays in some, 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 of these, uh, some of these teeth. And this is straight after a cementation. Okay, so I hope that this information and tips that I actually shared uh, will be useful for you and will help you uh, to avoid some kind of problems in your daily practice or you will know how to uh, compensate these problems, how to fight with these problems, how to get your best results. And uh, from my side, I would like to request from your side to not forget to not to forget to put likes to this video, to uh, subscribe to our YouTube channel and that will give uh, possibility of other colleagues for other colleagues to see this video and actually that will be your contribution in uh, dental education as well okay so uh, keep in touch in our next series we will be speaking about other interesting topics and tips and tricks be strong and may the dental force be with you